All right. I've been high thousands of times, high and drunk, every opiate available, from oxy to morphine to Percocet, Vicodin, Delata, and combine that with alcohol. But none of those highs could ever compare to the high of spiritually connecting with God through the Holy Spirit. He's the third part of the Trinity. And I remember when I saw the first person, I was about 10 years old, ever who was high in the Spirit. It was the daughter of Frank Ellis in White House, Ohio, the uh, White House Hope United Methodist Church. And she was just glowing. And her eyes were glowing, and she was smiling, and she was happy. And there was, there was no de denying it. There's no doubting it. The only question I had is what it is, what it was. What is this thing that she's got? And uh, back then at 10 years old, she was just a total freak to me, and, you know, someone to stay away from, you know, high in the Holy Spirit. No, you get high through Guinness and Percocet, that's how you get high. But no, there's a better high than that. And there's no hangovers. And it doesn't cost a nickel. And all it costs is my humility. And it comes. And it's the same concept of praying in the Spirit. Bono of U2 talks about praying in the tongues of angels and holding hand with the devil. And it was warm in the night. He talks about the two extremes, one being high, the spiritual, one being high of this earth, one being sacred, one being profane. But uh, the last time I really got high was about three or four days ago. I was in the bathroom and my hands were raised up to heaven and I happened to be exhausted because I've been training to do a hike on Wheeler Lake and uh, up at 10,000 feet and been taking lots and lots of protein, lots and lots of hikes. My body is basically, legs are basically crippled in back, shoulders, neck, spine, feet, knees, Achilles tendies, Achilles tendon, everything. So a thing about pain, to segue from getting high, the opposite of high is low in pain, is that the Catholic Church seems to embrace pain and embrace illness and embrace sickness as normative as in the human condition. When I was a failed Protestant for those 34 years, not once <laughs> would anybody ever pray with me for endurance. Like Paul says in the Corinthians, that God will give us grace to endure the fiery trial. His was a trial of the flesh. And I would say, I'm not going to pray for a healing. I've done that a thousand times. I simply want to pray for endurance. And they never could do it. They couldn't comprehend the idea of having an endurance and a grace in sickness, in weakness, in mental disease, mental disorder, physical arthritis, anxiety, OCD, post-traumatic stress, whatever you have, whatever you have, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, it's all there, unipolar depression, manic depression. You're going to require a lot of endurance, and that's one of the great things about the Catholic Church, and here I'm going long. They don't have a prosperity heresy. The Pope himself limps in chronic pain. He can't genuflect. He can't get down on one knee. The Pope acknowledges the poor and the impoverished. And the prosperity heresy is if you're lacking health or money, health or wealth, it's because lack of faith or lack of having the faith to double tithe or triple tithe or whatever this insanity you hear from Joyce Myers or Joey Boy Olstein. It's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. And you can't embrace someone who is in chronic pain unless you say it's normative. And the saints in the Catholic Church, many of them I'm learning and studying, were in chronic pain. 
whether it was uh, Mother Teresa with her bent over, bent over back and her arthritis, this little old lady who rocked the world. Whether it's Father Damien who ultimately succumbed to uh, leprosy after founding a leper colony off the coast of Florida, at the ter- uh, on the coast of Hawaii, on a small island. What happened to his faith? It's still there, brother. It's still there, mother. It's still there, mofo. 